Hello everyone, welcome back to another lecture in our game development series. So last time we talked about design patterns, what they are and couple of patterns that you know, commonly used in general software engineering. Now in this week we are going to look into some special patterns that are particularly used in computer graphics and games. So, right, the first pattern is the double buffer pattern. So, now here is a situation that would uh, help us to understand uh, this double buffering. So, right here in this screen, you can see this is a screenshot from a game, and you can see in the middle of the screen uh, the frame is broken so it looks like that this part of the frame belongs to uh, the previous frame of or previous iteration of the game and this part belongs to the next iteration of the game so this thing is called screen theory now something like this can be explained can be resolved with the double buffer pattern so this double buffer pattern causes a series of sequential operations to appear as instantaneous or simultaneous so let's uh, let me explain it a little more so here uh, you can see like consider this is the way we are rendering graphics into the screen okay so I just uh, think this box this is where the GPU write uh, or store the image data of the frame to be rendered and it starts from this point and go sequentially like this and in the same time if the screen is reading from this buffer and rendering that image so there is a possibility that while the GPU updates updates this frame in a half way the screen may be rendering that halfly partially updated frame into the screen so in that way we would get a result like this so to prevent that in what in double buffer pattern does is um, it keeps two buffers right and screen is uh, reading from one buffer and render that into the screen and the GPU is writing to another buffer so once the GPU writing for a complete frame is done in this buffer it is co completely copied to the next buffer that is used to render the screen render to the screen so in that way we will always have a consistent consistent frame the same frame throughout the whole image so we wouldn't have this effect of screen tearing so in graphics it allows us to have consistent frames but if it is not in graphic programming let's say if we are work, uh, using this pattern in another context uh, when dealing with data we it helps us to keep the integrity of data right so the next pattern is game low pattern so the idea of this pattern is decoupling the progression of the game time from the user input and processor speed so that means so when we play games uh, we have different uh, types of machines okay so we may have a pentium 4 machine or pentium 3 machine or a i7 i7 machine and also with a powerful graphic card or with a 
Intel graphic card so like that uh, we have computers with different specifications with different power so if we play the same game in a faster computer and a slower computer uh, in order to have a better experience then the game time should not depend on the performance of the machine that means if you are playing let's say if you are playing a car game then the car should not go faster just because you are using a powerful machine it should have the same speed I mean same engine power uh, in different in computers with different specifications oh, uh, that basically means the game time should be independent from the uh, speed of the computer also it should not depend on the input time as well that means the user input so usually what happens is like if we follow this model then first it process inputs and then update the game and then render so if we do this in this way so this is the delta time between two frames uh, not necessarily frames between two iterations of the game loop but as if you if you follow this model you can see uh, it depends the game time for a single frame depends on everything rendering speed and process input so the game time will definitely rely depend on the performance of the computer but in this model what it does is this process input and rendering go as fast as the computer can but the game updating happens only in a fixed interval so that means if we are playing a game in a powerful computer then it will have a, it will st uh, use uh, it will utilize the performance of computer and it will still have a better frame rate than a, a low end computer but still the game time will be same as in the low end computer that means the speed of the game will remain constant between two different computers so this is very important for well actually for most of the games to have a better experience and here is an example of a unity game loop here you can see there is a separate loop for the fixed update and another loop for on GUI, on GUI function event and another loop for this this whole part so as you can see the physics updates should happen in a constant speed so that uh, we wouldn't have uh, situations like a character when a character falls it wouldn't fall faster in a fast computer compared to a slower computer all right so the next design pattern we are going to talk about in games is this update method so if you know if you have code in almost in any of programs any of game engines you know what this update method is so in unity c sharp it is update and in in unreal it is tick in unreal board blueprints we call it the tick so what it does is simulate a collection of independent objects by telling each object to process one frame of behavior at a time so we know that this update method or tick is called once in every frame so things that we need to change in each frame uh, should put 
inside the update method but when the people uh, design or implement the game they don't know about what kind of game objects you would have so because of that they have defined a uh, object called uh, as a parent uh, class as game object and all the game objects you create and add to the world is a child class of this game object class so therefore all these child classes would have the update method and when the game is running the game engine can call this update method to process one frame of behavior at a time on all the objects present in the game uh, in the game scene right uh, the next pattern is component pattern so in this pattern the idea is allows a single entity to span multiple domains without coupling the domains to each other so basically this is the idea so when you make a, uh, when you get a game object in a scene you know they are can they can be just they can be characters so and animals so vehicles or just static things like rocks trees so like that there can be various things also they can have sound they can have physics simulations so they are not they may not have physics simulations so like that so if you make this or uh, all those game objects to have all the components such as physics components and collisions and audio components so if you by default if you make all the objects that you put into the game world have those components then it's not very efficient because uh, it is always better to have as much as as less as components we need so if you add something like a rock maybe we only need a rendering component and a collision component for that if we are not moving that rock if it is a static rock then we don't need any rigid body so physics simulation components there so if you add a animal then you may need to add collision and also audio component and also well whatever the component you need to make it behave like a live animal so therefore this components this plug pluggable components so where you can add uh, all those behaviors as a component to the objects that you put into the scene to support that we have we have this component pattern so where all these pluggable component components such as colliders renderers transforms uh, etc are extended from this component class so because of that uh, updating those uh, the behaviors that comes with those components and basically controlling the components within the game object can be done because the game object knows how does this component behaves what are the functions that the game object should call in order to execute the behavior provided by that component without knowing the concrete details of each of these components each of these child components so that's how we use component patterns in games we can see that pattern in both unity and unreal engine in unity as you can have see in this section using the add component we can add there are so many components there are multiple uh, various components that we can add to each game object and also when you is if you consider unreal then if you open the blueprint for uh, maybe a character blueprint there also you can add components to the to that particular character uh, actor or blueprint uh, character blueprint or actor blueprint you have opened right so the next pattern 
is object pool pattern. The object pool pattern is a software creation or design pattern that uses a set of initialized objects uh, kept ready to use. This is called the pool rather than allocating and destroying them on demand. For this, uh, let me give you an example. So let's say uh, consider an open world RPG game and there are multiple villages within that game so but uh, when the player is not let's say there are village there is village a and village b can i draw here okay let's say here is village a and here is village b let's say initially the character is in the village A. Then the all the NPC characters that who lives in this village A should be spawned in the village because the character because the player character can see them in here. But in the same time we don't have to keep running the NPC characters in the village B because unless there is a specific requirement uh, because uh, the player don't see the characters in the village B because player is not in that range so therefore uh, we don't have to load those characters now so uh, the main reason to do that is because we can't afford to have all the characters up and running in the same time because of the limitations of memory and computational power in the computers which runs the game so now let's say the character goes from A to B now the NPC characters should be in the village B so and we don't need these characters who was before in the village A so when the character moves here one approach would be we can destroy the characters who were there in villages village a and then spawn the new characters we need for village b but you know the spawning and destroying is a uh, expensive function so therefore you may see hitches in frame rate when you do that so the, a better approach would be when the character leaves this village A, we can mark each of these characters are available to replace in somewhere else. Then, as the player character approach the village B, we can move these characters we have already spawned into village B instantly so that only a location change would require no need to destroy and respawn so considering that the npcs are same in both villages so that's basically how this uh, object pool pattern is used to properly use this uh, we need to know that this uh, allocating and destroying in this case spawning and destroying is uh, expensive than changing the location of these already spawned npc characters we should use this pattern only if that condition is true okay and thanks for watching so with that i'd like to finish this uh, session this lecture and if you have any questions regarding this you can comment down below and see you in the next lecture. Goodbye.